Hey guys, welcome back, Tom here. In this video, we're going to be deploying a Django project on DigitalOcean, and I'm going to make it as simple to follow as possible. If you haven't signed up to DigitalOcean already, you can use the link in the description, um, which gives you some free compute time, I believe. Just before we get started, I'm gonna do a quick Patreon plug. You can now support me for roughly the price of a can of Coke or a pot noodle um, per month. Uh, the link for that is in the description if you wanna support me. Um, additionally, I've set up a Discord, which currently is empty. Uh, at the time of recording this, uh, you can go ahead and join there and ask me any questions you have uh, and I'll try my best to help you. Alternatively, you can always leave a question in the comments below. Um, so let's get started. So once you've made an account on DigitalOcean, we can go ahead and actually start a droplet, make a droplet, which is what we're going to do. So let's create our droplet. Uh, I'm going to go with Ubuntu, although I know Rancho OS is sort of really good for Docker, but we're not going to be focusing on that. I am going to be focusing on just a regular SSD and I'm going to go with this program. Docker actually wants you to have four gigabytes of RAM. I've not tried this one or this one, uh, but it certainly doesn't work with the smallest one. So you're going to be roughly paying about zero point, well, about four pennies per or cents per hour. I'm going to go with New York data center region. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can see I've already generated some uh, SSH keys, um, but we can go ahead and generate a new one just so people know what to do and how to do it. So we want to generate an SSH key. So currently just open up a terminal and go into your like root. So I'm in home forward slash user, which for me is monkhouse. Then I'm going to the CD forward into SSH. This is where all of our SSH keys are generated. And actually I'm just going to go ahead and remove uh, docean test.pub because that's what I created a minute ago when I wasn't recording, um, which is why it's also available there on, well, it's one of these. I think it's the monkhouse Manjaro one. Um, okay, so clear that. And now everything I have here is from what I had before. We're going to go ahead and generate a key now. So SSH key gen. Uh, key gen. So usually here you'd want to specify the full path, like sort of like home, monkhouse, whatever. But we are actually in the um, SSH folder, or .SSH folder, I guess. So we can just go ahead and just call it what we want it to call it. So I'm going to call it Deocean test to I guess or let's just call it uh, DDD something like that which is a terrible name for it but I don't care okay so we've generated that and we can basically just do if we have a look that should now exist actually it's clear put that at the top and then do cat um, DDD dot pub so this is the public key that you want to go ahead and grab copy that go to our digital ocean, new SSH key, and we just call it DDD. And yeah, wonderful. Okay, so, and, we was, and we've selected it also. So after this, we can pretty much just go ahead and generate everything. Just to reiterate, we're using an Ubuntu image. Um, I'm using the four, I'm using four gigabyte RAM um, package, I guess. New York, uh, SSH keys, um, DDD, and that's it, yeah. So let's go ahead and create the project. So this can take a minute. Um, what can I do in the meantime? Let's see. Let's clear this and I'm gonna go out of here and I'm gonna go into uh, YouTube. Clear, which is just an empty folder that I'm gonna be using later where we're gonna start a project. Once this is generated, which is any second now, we can click on it and we can see the droplet exists and we've got an IP address. So the next thing we really want to do is we want to SSH into it and we want to install Docker. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna grab this and I can talk you through it. Don't wanna execute it. So the IP address is wrong, of course. So we wanna grab our new IP address and then I can talk you through it. And then this was called DDD. Okay, so what's going on? We want to SSH into our droplet that we've created. And the default user for Ubuntu on distribution is root, so we want to we want to use the user root. Uh, this is our IP, IP address of the server. And then we're just saying which key do we want to use, and we want to use home forward slash monkhouse forward slash dot SSH, and then we want to use this DDD key that we generated. So here you need to do whatever your key was called. That's us, yes. Wonderful, clear, we're on our server now. 
boom. So the next thing we want to do is install Docker. So to install, just checking I'm recording, to install Docker, what we want to do is use the official Docker documentation, which I'll leave a link in the description for. And we're gonna start with this command. Now, if you, if you want to skip this bit, you can go ahead and, as in, not skip it, but if you don't want to watch me do it, you can skip this section and just use the official documentation to do this install. I'm just going to be following it. Uh, do the update. Okay, then we're going to grab all of this. Paste that in. Wonderful. Okay, so next we do this command. Wonderful. This command. Okay. Let's do this. That's fine. Okay. Pseudo update. Then we want this. Paste that. Yes. And next we should be able to just list the versions. Okay. Now, as it says, so these are basically the versions available to us. And the next thing we really want to do is we want to install the correct um, version. And we do that by um, using the second column, which is this bit here. So from the five to the jammy. And I think I actually did this before. So I was having a quick look if I could find one that I'd already done. So, so all we're doing here is doing a sudo apt install docker um, with the correct version. Um, which I've chosen the top one for. Okay, installed. So everything should now be working. So let's run this command. Um, hello from Docker. This message shows that your inst installation appears to be working correctly. Nice. So we've installed Docker. So our server is completely set up now for deployment. So the next thing we're going to do is come back to our local machine now. So you can see I'm on my Monkhouse main machine, um, YouTube. Uh, and we're basically gonna go ahead and grab the cookie cutter project. But first we're gonna start by installing a uh, virtual environment. So I'm gonna do vnv, and I'm gonna call it temv again, which is just test env basically. So Python 3-m vm temv. Make sure that exists. We can now go ahead and activate that. So bin activate, lovely, clear that. Um, we just really need to install um, pip install. We need to make sure that this is in quotes, like so. Okay, so we're installing it, lovely. So after this, what we can do now is we can use cookie cutter to grab cookie cutter Django. Uh, it's saying it's done it before, yes. Now we need to initialize our project. So this is basically what our stuff is going to be called. I'm going to call that my proj. Project slug is my proj. Yeah, I don't care about that. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Although actually domain name we could have put as our IP address. I've accidentally didn't do that. So we'll have to go and change that manually. But that's fine. Uh, here you probably want a real email. So if you've got a domain that you want to use, then you should go ahead and use a real one because that's how your SSL is generated. So I can use tom.monkhouse95 um, at gmail.com version. Don't care about that. Windows, no. Use PyCharm, no. Use Docker, yes, this is important. Uh, use that version. Three, none. Select mailgun service, that's fine. Use async, no. Use DRF, no. Again, I don't choose DRF because I'd rather just install everything myself for the most part uh, none use celery no use mail no use sentry no white noise noise if you haven't chosen like aws then you need to use white noise yes and that basically would just um serve our static files for us 
don't care about any of this. I think the rest can just stay the same. Okay, our project's been created. So I'm making this video assuming that you don't have a domain name available yet. If you do, then you can just go ahead and you could have put specified your domain. But anyway, we're gonna do a little bit of a few changes. So I'm gonna use VS Code now to go ahead and open my project. And we're just going to do a search for example.com. And we're gonna change all of these values here to basically be using our IP address. Now, again, if you have a domain name on your DigitalOcean, this is the only thing you need to change. Just go ahead and replace example.com with whatever your domain is. Um, if we're just using the IP address, which is what I'm gonna be doing in this video, we need to make a few more changes, but not many more changes. Um, so let's go ahead and grab our IP address. So copy that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just put the IP address here. I don't think I need to, I don't need to put it in twice, but I just can't be bothered to get rid of that code. Make sure we save that file. That doesn't matter. And these don't really matter either, I think. Don't save that. Don't save that. So these were open from a previous time. So research for example.com now. You can see that this is what it, these are the parts we actually need to replace. Okay. Hopefully for that you, for you that problem would not have occurred. So put the new IP address there. Make sure you save that file. Make sure this also has um, our IP address. Save that file. And I think that should be it. So once more, we need to make sure that basically our production environment uh, file has our IP address. I'm not sure if we need this leading dot actually. And yeah. Okay, so again, if you're using your own domain name at this point, rather than an IP address, then you can just leave everything as is and everything should work. Now the problem currently is, is that we are trying to use web secure um, with just an IP address, which we cannot do. And if you notice, even if we did call web, then it actually just redirects to web secure. So the first thing we can do is go ahead and just comment this out because we don't want it to go to web secure, we just want it, want to use web. The next thing we want to do is make sure that our entry point is just web, save that. And make sure that you don't comment this out, but we're gonna go ahead and comment these bits out. And that's it, that's all we need to do for IP address. So we're basically just using HTTP rather than HTTPS. Uh, once you're ready to kind of deploy, you can just uncomment these bits, um, add in your domain names such as um, for me, I guess the one that was available was questionly.app, which is a previous project. Um, and that's it. So all we now need to do is copy those files across to the server, which we can do using SCP. And we can see that we've got um, our project here, and this is where we're going to be doing our, this is where we're going to be doing our command. Copy and paste this over. A couple of changes we need to make. Um, our key is not called docean2, it's called ddd, at least mine is. My proj is correct, that's what we've called our project. So make sure whatever your project is called is here. And then the next thing is make sure your correct IP address is there also. Copy that, copy that in here. And what we're doing um, dash i is just saying which key we want to use, which verse is um, um, ddd. And dash r is just saying that we're going to recursively copy everything from my project over into uh, our droplet. So this might take approximately a minute. I think that's what it takes for me. So I'm going to stop recording here for a second. Okay, so we're going to SSH into our server now. Clear all of that. Make sure the files are there. Wonderful. So now let's go into our project directory clear, ls, and we should be able to deploy now. So just notice that's for local. So we wanna make sure we specify our production file. So docker compose dash f production.yaml up the build. Okay, so that's all now done. 
Um, it looks like everything is working. Shall we try it out? Wonderful. First time. How about that? Nice one. So that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully that was useful. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, join the Discord server, support me on Patreon, uh, use my link, all of those things, all that jazz. Nice one. Take care, everyone.